Hello everyone. In this video, we can study about curves. Coming to the overview of this video. In this video, we will be covering what is a curve, where they are provided, what is the need of providing them, what are the different types of curves, and also the explanation of simple circular curves in detail. And uh, inside that, uh, we will be discussing various parts of the curve as well as elements of the curve. And then next, how we can give the designation for a curve, how we can designate a curve, and what is the degree of the curve. Now, coming to curves, uh, as, the, as it is shown in this figure, these curves are actually bends. These are provided in the lines of communication like roads, railways, canals, etc. in order to bring about the gradual change of direction. These curves will enable the vehicle to pass from one path on to another when two paths meet at an angle. They are also used in the vertical plane at all changes of grades to avoid the abrupt change of grade at the apex. Now, mainly according to the um, area where these curves are provided, according to the topography, we can classify the curves as horizontal curve as well as vertical curves. Now, coming to horizontal curves, these horizontal curves are provided in a horizontal plane to have the gradual change in direction and coming to vertical curves, these are provided in a vertical plane to obtain the gradual change in grade and such curves are known as vertical curves. And these curves may be circular or parabolic and curves are generally arcs of parabolas. That's the general case. And the curves are laid out on the ground along the center line of the work. Now, what are the needs of providing the curves? What is the major needs? Actually, this curve has wide range of applications. It's commonly used in highways, railways and canals for bringing about the gradual change of direction of motion. And they are provided. Why they are provided? They are provided for the following reasons. To bring about a gradual change in the direction of motion. Whenever there is there change is required, direction change is required, we can provide this curves. And in order to bring about a gradual change in grade and for good visibility, these curves are provided. And it will alert the driver so that he may not fall asleep. If we are providing a curve, rather than providing a straight road, we can provide curves in between the straight roads so that uh, it will give an alert to the driver. And to lay out the canal alignment and also to control the erosion of canal banks by the thrust of flowing water in a canal. So it can also control erosion as well as it is. it will help to lay out the canal. And what are the major classification of this circular curves? Main consideration, main classifications. They can be classified as symbol curves, compound curves, and reverse curves. Now coming to the symbol curve. You can see in this figure, this the figure shows a symbol curve. And it is consisting of a single arc of a circle. And it is being connected by two straights, say AB as well as BC. And it is also having a radius of same magnitude throughout. So, uh, this for a simple curve, the radius is not changing. From the start to the end of the curve, the radius will remain constant. That's about the simple curve. Now, Coming to the compound curve, you can see in the figure, um, it is being made up of two curves of different radii. And this is having different radii which is bending in the same direction 
and lying on the same side of the common tangent. If we draw a common tangent to the two curves from, from which this compound curve is made of, uh, here the, from the figure, Mn is the common tangent. And we can see both of these curves with different radii are lying on the same side. That means center for the two curves are lying on the same side of the common tangent. Okay, so that's about the compound curve. And now coming to the reverse or otherwise it is termed as serpentine curve. And it is made up of two arcs and these two arcs can have equal or different radii and they will be bending in opposite direction with a common tangent at the junction. See in the figure Mn is the common tangent and you can see the centers of both the curves O1 as well as O2 are lying on the, the on opposite side of Mn, the common tangent. Also their centers lies on opposite side and the reverse curves are used when straights are parallel or intersect at a very small angle. These are the cases where the reverse curves are provided. Now we can explain the simple circular curve in detail. Okay. While explaining the simple circular curve, uh, in this figure you can see the straight lines AB as well as BC. This AB is the first tangent or it can be also termed as rare tangent and the second tangent BC may be termed as the forward tangent. Okay and uh, this is the second tangent or forward tangent and then the point of intersection of these two tangents or these two straights we can also term the tangents as straights of the curve and this point of intersection B uh, is not termed as vertex, vertex of the curve. And the tangent points, this T1 and T2 are the tangent points for these curves. And where this T1 will represent the beginning of the curve and it is the tangent curve point um, and then T2 is the uh, representation for end of the curve and or curve tangent point. Okay, then angle ABC, angle ABC is the angle of intersection for uh, this curve and it is represented by I and angle B dash BC will represent the deflection angle for the curve and it is being termed as phi. Then BT1 and B T2 will give the tangent length and T1 T2 is termed as the long chord of the curve. Then arc T1 F T2 where F is the midpoint or it is the highest point it is termed as apex and this B T1 F T2 that arc is termed will give the r uh, this will give the length of the curve and bf this bf will give the apex distance of the curve and this ef is termed as the worst sign of the curve this distance ef distance is the is termed as worst sign of the curve and uh, you can see in this figure um, this angle T1 O T2. It is being uh, denoted as the letter phi. That means uh, the same as deflection angle. Why? We know this T1 O T2 will be equal to 180 minus this angle I, angle of intersection. Since this T1 B T2 O uh, forms a quadrilateral sum of opposite sides uh, will be 180 
so uh, sum of opposite angles will be 180 so what happens is that this angle will be equal to 180 minus i and but this a b dash is a straight line so 180 minus i will be giving the deflection angle phi so that means angle t1 o t2 the central angle it will be equal to the deflection angle phi so it is also represented as phi okay then so this uh, various parts of the curve uh, again discussed in detail a b and b c uh, form the tangent then intersection point b is the intersection point or the vertex and when the curve deflects to the right side of progress of the survey it is termed as a right handed curve and when to the left it is termed as left handed curve and name of various parts of the curve the line ab and bc are the tangents and ab is the first tangent bc is the second tangent we have already discussed and t1 and t2 are the points uh, where the curve touches and um, curve and tangent touches and they are not termed as tangent points where t1 is the tangent curve point uh, which marks the beginning of the curve and t2 marks the end of the curve and it is termed as curve tangent point and angle abc where uh, the it is the angle between the lines ab and bc which is termed as the angle of intersection i and the angle by which the forward tangent deflects from the rear tangent is termed as the deflection angle of the curve which is represented by phi and the distances from the point of intersection to the tangent point is termed as the tangent length bt1 and bt2 and the line joining the two tangent points t1 and t2 is known as the long code then arc t1 f t2 will give the length of the curve and f is termed as the uh, summit or apex of the curve bf is termed as the apex distance and ef is termed as the worst sign of the curve and now coming to the elements of the simple circular curve the angle of intersection plus deflection angle we know uh, it is a straight line so it will be forming 180 and uh, also we know angle t1 o t2 is equal to 180 minus i which will be equal to phi that means the central angle is equal to deflection angle and the tangent length b t1 equal to b t2 will be equal to what o t1 tan phi by 2 that we can see here the tangent length b t1 and b t2 b t1 as well as b t2 this angle will be phi by 2 so this length will be r tan phi by 2 so it's being given here r tan phi by 2 and then length of the chord is given by 2 long chord it is given by 2 times t1 e and so it is again 2r sin phi by 2 and we can see it from the figure this distance t1 t2 will be equal to 2 times t1 e and again what is this distance this distance will be r sin phi by 2 so total length t1 t2 is equal to 2r sin phi by 2 And then length of the curve, which is the arc itself, it can be just written as r phi. And this will be in radians. And to convert it, we can um, multiply by pi by 180, so that it will be in degree. So pi r phi by 180 degree. Then apex distance, that means bf. bf is given by the equation r into 1 minus cos phi by 2 and we can see it from the figure it is 
bs so bs 